Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday, May 7th. Uh, Truly, it's hard to believe we're already into the next month. Um, It is so good, so good to see your faces um, after several weeks. And I thank you very much for your prayers um, for myself and my family. Uh, Really, it was like a, just a brief moment here, pilgrimage in some ways to Nick's grandparents' places of birth. Um, Those villages were built in like the 1300s and in Italy and really amazing to see and of course some of the relatives to meet um, and then to explore some other places in Europe. Thank you for your prayers for our son Skylar and the opportunities that he had through that time. Um, I appreciate so much uh, Pastor Stiles, who is with you, and I know had a wonderful experience with you. Um, And just to add one more thing, um, this coming Sunday, next Sunday, uh, we will be with the family as we are celebrating the baptism of the youngest Morelli, Arlo Nicholas Morelli. And um, I will be participating with that. So your pastor, Will, is going to be with you here uh, next Sunday. So you can anticipate that. Uh, Please enjoy that wonderful breakfast on Mother's Day, which is next Sunday. Thanks to all who are preparing that breakfast. Um, Graduations, we know, are around the corner. So please have, uh, if you can, the graduation information Uh, to Louida in the church office, the hope is by May 28th, so that that can be put into a newsletter and just have some ways of celebrating with the graduates. Let me ask, are there any other announcements? Yes, there we go. Good morning. Morning. Briefly after church, uh, for men who are volunteering for the breakfast next week, we'll just go over some things to prepare for next week. So if you're helping out next week with the breakfast, meet downstairs after church. Thank you. All right. Any other announcements we have to share? Okay. Well, please remember that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, You are welcome here at the Abbey Reformed United Church of Christ. We worship together this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please stand for our call to worship. Let us offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Whoever believes in Christ will not be put to shame. Confident in this promise, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Almighty God, your word offers freedom from sin, but we confess that we have not obeyed your word. We have harbored malice toward our neighbors. We have been deceitful in our relationships. We have been insincere in our commitments. Through gossip, we have slandered our friends. Forgive us our sins and lead us to genuine repentance. Help your children long for your pure spiritual milk that we may grow into the joy of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Sisters and brothers, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. 
Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen.
Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Psalms, chapter 31, verses 1 to 5 and 15 to 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me. Be a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. And our second reading is from the from 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And, the stone, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. May God add his blessing to the reading of this holy word this morning. Holy Gospel according to St. John from the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If that were not so, I would not have told you that I go and prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I am coming again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time? And yet you have not come to know me, Philip. The one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? The Father is in me. The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father, as he remains in me, does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. 
then greater works than these he will do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Gospel of our Lord. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please pray with me, if you will. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. Lord, who is our strength and our very life. Amen. We continue on this Sunday, May 7th, to celebrate within these 50 days of the Easter season. And we hear this promise in today's gospel from John chapter 14, that our Lord goes to prepare a place for us. Even within God's dwelling, God's home, he says, welcome, come on. This is my house, but there is a room for you here. What a comfort, right? Beyond our words, what a comfort this is to know that there is a future and a hope. A truer welcome home, a truer welcome home than what we could ever imagine. And so we hold on to this for those who have recently gone before us as Sarah Port, as Beauvais, who have recently passed, to this one who knows our suffering and knows what death is like, but also to not let the grave be the end, but for life and resurrection yet to come. So we ponder together today, dwelling place. And in the reference here in the Gospel of John, we have this phrase earlier in John's gospel that's about abiding in, in the Lord. You know, Jesus is saying, abide in me, I abide in you. And he's talking about a vine and the branches. He's talking about bearing fruit, not apart from the vine, not by ourselves, not cut off, but being connected in, bearing fruit and in the literal Greek, it does mean that word abide means to pitch one's tent also. So if we are hikers, if we are campers, if we are gardeners, these are great images for us to understand more about that place, holding place, connecting with the living God. We might ask ourselves, well, how do we prepare a place. We know when people are coming over, especially, we are doing all kinds of things within our homes, preparing our home for those visitors. When we haven't been home for a while, coming back home is so wonderful to know those familiar surroundings and what's on the wall and to be comforted by one another in our homes. Our pilgrimages, our visitations are also preparing places to go, to visit, and God is there. God prepares within those times of visits and pilgrimages. Our hearts are places of dwelling. God is there, and we can be mindful to prepare and make room first for our Lord and prepare and make room for others in our lives, holding space for others in joy and in sorrow, cultivating what it means to hear that still small voice. This is connecting to life and purpose, even in troubled times. It points us to something greater than ourselves. As we know God and this community of faith, 
community of faith that walks with us in the midst of life's journey. So the truth is that there's preparing place presently as well as in a time to come. We have to hold on to that because it's not just about the great by and by. It is about the present and living fully in our time. The truth is that when we feel alone, we're never really alone. God has prepared us and reminds us that God is present and that we have others around us, even when we can't see them physically with us. And yes, with those who have gone before us, there is, I believe, as the Celtic faith uh, reminds us, that thin line between us now and heaven's realm. We are not alone. It is a good thing to remember. And in the psalm today, we hear from verse three and uh, several others that God is our rock, our fortress. For the sake of your name, Lord, you will lead us and guide us. You will pull me even out of the net that has entangled me. You are my strength. Into your hands I entrust my spirit. That sounds very familiar. One who gave his life for us. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Jesus, Jesus was able to give his spirit up for us so that there would be something more. So into God's hands, we too can commend our spirit, even in the present days that we live, because sometimes it's troubling. Sometimes we have a lot on our plate and we're like, whoa, you know, overwhelmed we can be at times. But Jesus reminds us that he is there, dwelling place. There is a dwelling place, and we are a part of that dwelling place, and we can embrace it. Later in John's Gospel, chapter 14, we hear of that vine connection and that abiding as what was spoken. For in verse 10, Jesus is asking Philip now, do you not believe that I am in the Father, that the Father is in me, that we are connected? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father, as he remains in me, does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, the Father is in me. We are connected. Otherwise, if you can't think of that, believe because of the works. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me and the works I do, he will do also. Meaning the church, the people of God following in this risen Lord. And not only that, but greater works than these will we do because Jesus is going to the Father. So there was comfort about knowing that there is a dwelling place for us yet to come, but that there's more that we can do now as we dwell within God's life and spirit, hope for others and peace. And so in the midst of this, I'd like to share also about a dwelling place as we've been focusing on this particular theme of dwelling place. In 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, there is a lot talked about here relating to the dwelling place. So as we have tasted the kindness of the Lord, coming to him as a living stone, choice and precious in the sight of God, you also you also are living stones, living stones built up in a spiritual house. There is a home right here at the Abbey. There is a home right here within the connected communities of faith, living faith in a living Lord. It says we are being built up as a chosen people 
Yes, even a royal priesthood, a people for God's own purpose, so that we might proclaim the excellency of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We were once not a people, but now a people of God who have received mercy. So we're grateful that God continues to build, now presently, God's dwelling place. It is a future and a hope, but also a living hope now. And we can trust in a builder's design, the builder who is connecting us together. There is design to what is being connected. I'm so grateful to be a part of this family of faith for the time that we have been here in my family. And yet next week, you have a Sunday where Pastor Will is coming. And there is a sense of God building this design in the midst. We can trust that. And we can be a part of that and trust in what God is doing. We can all take some deep breaths and recognize God's fresh, renewing presence. To be able to receive God's presence within and around us and with others. Because you know what? We need to hold space with others in their hurts and their joys. And in the ways that God will speak that still small voice into our lives. We embrace with grace and gratitude and love what God is building in our lives. And don't, let's not limit what God is doing, but just stay, if we stay focused through the forgiveness and the grace and the love of our Lord daily, open our hearts to this living Lord who is the cornerstone of this building. And you can say spiritually, but, you know, there is a sense of the building of God. Not so much the bricks and mortar all the time, but the people, the hearts of the people together calling upon the living Lord. Our actions will be directed and guided by this living Lord. The peace of God's hope, that peace and the presence of God gives us purpose for our lives. We're never alone, never alone, and never separate from that reach of God's great love. Let us be ones who reach out with that welcome and love here within this place. Amen. Together, we share in the prayers of the people. I will share uh, from each response, Lord, in your mercy, and you're welcome to respond, hear our prayers. Let us pray. We are united, Lord, in the hope and the joy of the resurrection. We pray for your people across this world and for this world and for all in need. God of life, strengthen your people to proclaim your good news, even in times of trouble. You are with us, and what a treasure that is. Help us to embrace that. Help us to realize how we need to stretch and move to be able to embrace more of your life and work in our lives. Strengthen bridge building ministry within the church and within the world, that your name may be praised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, through verdant fields and ardent deserts. Protect the earth's diverse habitants from the forces of pollution, erosion, extinction, and warming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Mighty Lord, your spirit guides us into truth. Give wisdom to the world and local leaders, organizations as they begin to build or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders 
and aid organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt following conflict, following unrest or violence or natural disaster. We hold those particular places in our heart to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war or poverty, and all who question if there is even a home in your heart for them. For there is. Lord, we pray for all who are sick, all who are on our prayer list. We remember them to you now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Assuring God, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved or changed jobs or schools, those who are retired or going through transitions of any kind. Lord, be with all those who grieve and in that transition. We lift to you the family of Sarah Port. We lift to you Catherine, Ada, and Mika, and all of Beauvais' family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord, renewing God, you gather the saints, you gather your people in a heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us. Their love continues because of your victory through the cross. Grant confidence and comfort for all awaiting that place that you have prepared. And let us walk in your strength of faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, we do rejoice in the victory of Christ's resurrection. We lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Offering plates can be found at each entrance of the sanctuary, or offerings can be dropped by the church into the slot on the door nearest Moore on 6th Street. Checks can be mailed, or you can give electronically on the Abbey's website. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Please join me in the prayer of dedication of gifts and self. Almighty God, receive the gifts we bring in gratitude for your astounding goodness. Make our lives to be an acceptable offering in union with our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen.
go forth to serve in the name of our risen Lord. May Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life be with you. May the Spirit empower you to serve in Christ's name. May God, who raised Christ from the dead, keep you forevermore. Alleluia.